a blessed evening, a blessed day to all of you, those who are uh, joining us through live streaming from other parts of the world. We begin today with a with the reading of the so-called Sermon of the Mount on the Mount in the Gospel of Matthew. And here Jesus is presented as the new Moses who goes up to a just as Moses went up to Sinai, so this new Moses, Jesus, goes up also to a new Sinai and proclaims the new law of the gospel. It is uh, not an imposing and terrible uh, mountain, nor does he climb in solitude like Moses. It is a pleasant hill which Jesus climbs surrounded by his disciples. And the new law is not a series of new precepts and obligations, but interestingly, the new law is about a formula of happiness. Jesus simply declares who are happy and blessed in the eyes of God. But on the other hand, no matter how good these words are, blessed, blessed are, happy, etc., they sound good, but we cannot help but to be shocked also by what it declares. For they contradict not only the old uh, theology of retribution, but also more our natural inclinations. Is it not absurd to declare happy those who mourn, those who are, are hungry, those who suffer and are persecuted? Call them blessed, happy. Is that not a contradiction? Isn't Jesus contravening the most basic and legitimate aspirations of everyone? Do Christians want to suffer and uh, suffer and cry? I think we agree to a great degree to what the philosopher Nietzsche consider that Christian faith that uh, the very Christian faith is something that is inhuman a herd morality he said which worships weakness and despises the joys of life but what is really the message? What is Jesus really talking about today when the opening of his preaching, of his teaching of the new law is about blessedness? I think at the core of this Jesus' teaching is he is talking about himself. He is the new Moses, but infinitely greater and surpasses Moses, since Moses limited himself to transmitting what he had received from God and nothing else. While Jesus speaks with authority from himself, moreover, he is the new law because he is the person who carries the law written not on tablets of stones but written in his heart. Jesus does not uh, do as people often do. 
especially the powerful who demand from others sacrifices that they cannot do that for themselves or what we say who preach what they cannot fulfill Jesus does not tell us be happy even if you are poor you are suffering or you do not have a piece of bread to put in your mouth wasn't he the one who fed the crowd because he felt sorry for them and did not want them want to send them away isn't he precisely the one who proclaiming the good news cured all kinds of diseases and ailments of body and spirit Jesus is not someone who who tricks others who tells us that our ills are really good and that we have what we have to do is settle for them and above all be happy Jesus offers us here his self portrait he is happy because he is the beloved son of the father even though by assuming the human condition he takes upon himself all the sufferings that afflict human beings and furthermore he wants to share his happiness with us by inviting us to participate in this filial relationship even if things go wrong like what he had experienced himself God does not for that reason let us down on the contrary he looks at us with love blesses us and welcomes us in his son Jesus in other words the beatitude or the blessedness is like what Jesus had that intimate filial relationship with the father and to place our trust in him and not in things or anyone else that consists the true blessedness being happy is to have God at the center of our lives in him we put our trust in him we put our obedience like Jesus did furthermore the Beatitudes are not only some kind of a passive situations where we where we well we are thrown into that we have to suffer but also implies here positive attitudes positive disposition to act that we have to freely assume like being merciful purifying our own heart working for peace fighting for justice even if we are persecuted for it that is to actively participate in the in giving birth to a new world of the kingdom of God that is struggling to make its way into the old to this old world of ours and that is what Jesus came to bring us to inaugurate new kingdom the person who dedicates himself or herself to this task united with Christ and encouraged by him and serving our brothers and sisters encouraging and comforting one another as Paul reminds us in the first reading knows the deep happiness a beatitude 
that no shadow of this world can obscure. And this is also the source of true happiness when one becomes an agent of goodness, of giving birth to a new society of where there is peace, justice, equality, respect. There, when people know how to serve, there is happiness. So blessedness, happiness, according to the gospel, can be summarized in our in standing, our relationship, the quality of our relationship with God, being children of God, and cultivate that relationship with Him, that whatever happens at the center is God, Jesus, in our relationship that makes us weather, face the difficulties and challenges of everyday life, even suffering. And always we have at the core of this our trust in God like Jesus did in His relationship with the Father. And happiness also is knowing how to give ourselves at the service of the kingdom of God in its development, in its propagation here on earth by helping one another in the spirit of service, loving service to others. As we celebrate once again this Eucharist, may we who receive Him who comes into our lives be the source of strength that drives, that brings us, that impels us to go on trusting and holding on to our God and cultivating our relationship with Him. And also, may these Eucharist help us grow towards service, service for the kingdom of God. Amen.